This video about the lens is number three in our series about the aging eye. In the first video we talked about vision changes in some detail. In the second we talked about changes in the cornea and iris. In this video we are going to concentrate on the lens, the structure which has the most effect on vision as we age. To get you oriented, the cornea is the clear window in the front of the eye. The iris is the colored structure which regulates how much light gets into the eye. Behind the iris is the lens, just like the lens in a camera. Lining the inside is the retina which records the image like the film in a camera. Because the lens is behind the iris, you usually can't see your own lens by looking in a mirror. The only way to see it is at an eye exam looking through a dilated pupil. As the slit beam of light enters the eye on the left, it shows the relatively thin arched shape of the cornea. Then there is a fluid filled space between the cornea and lens, and then the light passes through the lens giving you an idea of its thickness, shape, and typical color. One of the things we talked about in previous videos was that the cornea and lens act together to focus light onto the retina. The cornea provides two-thirds of the focusing power, while the lens provides one-third. But the lens is unique because it can change shape, which is what gives us our ability to focus from distance to near and back again. Consider that the lens is a living structure, with cells that continue dividing slowly over your lifetime. Cell division happens around the equator of the lens, with the cells migrating toward the center of the lens. The lens is encased in an envelope, or capsule, so that the number of cells packed in this space increases gradually but continuously over your lifetime. That and other processes like light damage and oxidation result in three significant changes in the lens. First, as cells accumulate, the lens increases in size. This is important because it contributes to a kind of glaucoma called angle closure, which is an important topic covered in an earlier video. Briefly, in a young eye with a normal sized lens, there is wide open access to the meshwork, through which the fluid leaves the eye. We call this an open angle. Here I have labeled the older, fatter lens as a cataract. Notice how the increase in lens size pushes the iris forward, causing the access passage to narrow. We call this a narrow angle, which can potentially close and block exit of fluid from the eye. Then pressure rises and may cause significant glaucoma damage. The second lens change, loss of flexibility, definitely has a noticeable effect on vision. In youth, the lens is soft like gelatin. When the focusing muscles pull on the lens, it changes shape easily. As years slash decades go by, the lens gets progressively harder, kind of like changing from jello to a gummy bear. This graph shows how flexibility changes with time, as measured by the ability to change focus. Under age 20, there is a lot of focusing power that can be added at will. As years slash decades go by, you can see the steady decline in flexibility, which means you are losing your ability to change focus from distance to near. Usually at about age 40, people started to notice that print that once looked nice and clear has become a challenge. Adding more light and holding things further away is some help, but reading glasses are usually the answer. As eye doctors, we are often the ones who break the news that people have arrived at the first noticeable landmark of aging. The third change in the lens is change in color and clarity, which is the process of cataract development. This lens is relatively clear, like in a young person. By middle age, you can see the lens is getting yellower and somewhat cloudy. Cataract grading systems call the clouding opalescence. This is a mild to moderate cataract with vision that is slightly decreased. This is a densely opaque, advanced cataract. 
Here is a very rough idea of how the lens changes in color over time. Another, another way to get an idea of color change is by comparing photos taken of the retina. This retinal photo is taken through a moderate cataract. On the right is the same person, but this photo is taken through a clear replacement lens after cataract surgery. See the difference? Following cataract surgery, people frequently comment that they, A, they had more wrinkles than they thought, and B, what a difference in colors that they notice. The effect of lens clouding, that is cataract, causes a decline in vision that cannot be remedied by glasses. This is an idea of how cataract reduces the contrast and clarity of vision. Not only is there bothersome blurring of vision, but glare will add additional interference affecting daily activities like reading and driving. Glare is divided into two categories. Discomfort glare refers to the bothersome effect of bright light, but acuity is not affected. Disability glare relates to light scatter that can reduce vision. The name for the lens when it becomes cloudy is cataract. The main risk factor for cataract is, you guessed it, age. Cataract formation is accelerated by cumulative exposure to UV light and certain medications like prednisone. But you can limit UV exposure by wearing a hat and sunglasses or lenses with UV coating. To date, there is no known medication that can make a cloudy lens become clear again. If vision is significantly reduced and it interferes with driving, reading, or occupational acti activities, then cataract surgery can be done. You can picture cataract surgery as happening in four steps. First, a small incision about a quarter of an inch wide is made into the peripheral cornea. Second, an opening is made in the front capsule of the lens. Third, an ultrasound instrument is used to break up the cloudy lens and vacuum the fragment, fragments from inside the eye. One important aim here is to leave the lens capsule intact because it will support the replacement lens. Last, an artificial lens is placed inside the capsule where the natural lens came out of. The replacement lens can be either single focus or multifocal, but that is the subject of another video. In the big picture, how important is cataract? Worldwide, cataract is the leading cause of blindness at 51%. Nothing else is even close. Consider that this could be fixed by a surgery if the resources were available. While we are on global health, consider this slide about vision impairment in general, including blindness. Cataract is still a large part at 33%, but what about the larger part at 42% labeled RE? That is refractive error, the need for glasses, an even easier problem to fix if resources were available. How about in the U.S.? Here are the top 10 expenditures for Medicare in 2011. The top four are office visits. Number five is cataract surgery, making it the largest expenditure for a surgical procedure paid for by Medicare. In video four, we will look at changes in vitreous and retina, vitreous changes leading to retinal tear and detachment, and retinal changes that may or may not pr proceed to macular degeneration. Here are selected references if you want to read about these things in more detail.